So obviously tonight we have a guest. It's Sunny we Jim do. from Isle of Rangoon. Oh, yeah. joining us tonight. And I have to I know you've you've been watching New Twin Peaks and not enjoying it quite as much as me. But every time I hear Sunny Jim now, oh, I think of Dougie Jones's kid. <laughs> who you look nothing like. Oh, <laughs> you're, so you're much more you're much more handsome. <laughs> Uh, and he's going to be joining us for the what the fuck is wrong with you tonight. Oh, God. Stories. We have, you know there, what? There are pics of me all gothed out. They're on my Instagram. Well, there's a pic. It's on my Instagram. I don't know. My Instagram is just my name. It's easy to find. You know, we're, we we're reminiscing about old vampire LARP stuff. Interestingly enough, our very first story this week kind of is a bit of an intersection there. Hey, yeah, you should chick, so it's all, it's all about blood sucking. Yeah. Let's let's start with. Oh, come on, I need to work. But Just... you'd make a bad vampire because you only have one fang. Wrong, wrong end too. Yeah, that'd be tough. And you'd I be like. Anyway. That's that's just painful. All right, so let's get the intro going. My intro. Oh, come on. Don't fucking crash. You're this is cr a professional fucking operation we run here. Mother pus bucket. And what's funny is someone, I was at the cat shelter where I work on Saturday, and I was like, yeah, I can't hang out today. I gotta, we're going out tonight. And I gotta, cause you know, I was in like normal human clothes and I had to go put on 15 tons of black eye makeup and a goth dress. <laughs> and the woman that I've, that one of the women I've made friends with there is like, oh, what are you doing tonight? And I'm like, do I tell her? Sure, why not? So I'm like, I'm going to a LARP. She's like, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to go dress up and pretend I'm a vampire all night. And she's like, that sounds so much fun. I'm like, okay. Because there's one of two reactions. People are like, that sounds so cool. Or, oh. Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly. Right. Oh, something's wrong with you. <laughs> anyway, let's get our intro going. Each week... Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And yeah, this one well, this is definitely a kind of LARP. They're, they're not, although these are not normally people we, we accept. It doesn't count as LARP if everybody else doesn't know. If only you know you're LARPing, it doesn't fucking count. Well, nobody, <laughs> nobody, oh fuck, nobody informed these people that uh, that there would be. Uh, we normally don't accept these sort of people into the LARP club, but um, Dracula's castle closed as bears take over grounds. Like, oh my god, real bears. Bucharest, Romania. Danger lurks at Dracula's castle. Romanian authorities have closed a 13th century fortress connected to Vlad the Impaler after a mother bear and her cubs were found roaming the area. Aww. I didn't know they were letting you of a ball make movies again. <laughs> a citadel atop a mountain in central Romania can be reached only by climbing 1,480 steps. It was shut in late May for the safety of visitors. Uh, local prefect Milian Dragnia, that is an awesome name, says the uh, Environment Ministry has agreed to capture the four bears and re relocate them elsewhere. Authorities blame people leaving food in the area. Why? Those bears got a sweet-ass castle. That's, that's one of those... That is just a weird-ass thing to happen. You go to so see... One of those little bear cubs is Liana Mormont, and they're going to try and relocate her, and she's going to be like, fuck you, this bear island, bitches. <laughs> This blood is too negative. This blood is too positive. <laughs> this blood is just right. They got a sweet bear castle. Everybody's all vampire bears. This this is. 
<laughs> this is Drac who knew Dracula trained attack bears? I mean, wouldn't you? Yeah, you know the that that wolves thing always all right, let's talk let's reminisce about our LARP days. Um in Vampire the Masquerade, it's a role-playing mm -hmm. game. Um you can have ghouls like Renfield, like in Dracula. And you can have ghouls who are animals, animal servants. And of course, traditionally, it was always wolves and bats. But this being gamers, and I this being wanted a ghoul hippo, and no ST would let me have it. Exactly. And this being us dorks, people would ghoul every goddamn animal. Weasel. Yeah. They'd be like, this is this is my ghoul naked mole rat. We His had name is we had the Nosferatu primogen of Charleston, South Carolina came up with a horrible idea that the ST could not argue with. We don't have a zoo in Charleston, but we do have a wildlife preserve for animals who were native to Charleston when the settlers arrived. It's called Charlestown Landing. And they don't have monkeys, but they do have raccoons. Oh, God. Little ghoul trash pandas. So in game, he stole all the raccoons. Ghoul, and the reason he picked raccoons was they have thumbs. He made rocket. Stole the Suck it, raccoon. <laughs> stole the raccoons and trained them to light and throw pipe bombs. That's amazing. I might start doing that with real raccoons. This. <laughs> Yeah. These were the kind of dorks we were in college. This is what we do. We dress yeah, up. Yeah, was it a game where they had gold rats with, all with little, like, GoPro cameras attached to them? So the prince knew what was going on everywhere because the little rats with GoPros were in your face, like... we. But you didn't know they were there. Like, you couldn't make a test to see the rats because they also had obfuscate. We, 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 we were tremendous dorks. This is what we were doing in college. And I'm 40 years old and I've gone back. And look where you are now. Next up is Florida. And this is... God damn it. I feel... Sometimes I feel there's a lot of futility in this this whole arrangement here. Do I, you? Because we try to tell people, please stop doing these things. These are not did good. You, I, did you see my tweet that Freakonomics Radio this week was all about the unusually high percentage of violence at Chuck E. Cheese. Yes! And they ran a comparison between Chuck E. Cheese and Dave and Buster's because these are like economics nerds. So they spent a whole hour on that shit. It's fascinating. Which was worse? Um, Dave and Buster's by a little bit, but they said the margin of error isn't enough to compensate for the fact that Dave and Buster serves a older demographic in alcohol. So they feel like really... Ratio-wise, Chuck E. Cheese is worse by the, by the target audience. Charles Endangerment Cheese. <laughs> but um, we, uh, we try to tell these people, please stop doing these things. And this is one of the oldest things that keeps goddamn happening. Florida, man stuffs 15 bottles of motor oil 30 DVDs down his pants. Wow. That's a 7 Eleven. Lakeland, Florida. Authorities say a man who was wearing baggy blue jeans managed to stuff 15 quart sized bottles of Pennzoil motor oil and 30 DVDs down his pants before walking out of a 7 Eleven. Unfortunately. Hmm. 7-Eleven does not have the good porn, and motor oil is not safe lube. No, it wasn't even good porn. You know what he, he got? 30 copies of Treasure Hunt. Is that a movie? I don't know. I don't think it's a porn. It sounds like it could be a porn. But... <laughs> like, how are you gonna... How are you gonna walk? Badly. Very Noisily. Good. Like C three PO, pinching a loaf. <laughs> it gets worse Hi, though. Oh, oh yeah, Peggy's in here with me. I didn't even know that. Hi, Peggy. Hi. Say hi to the internet. 
No. Fuck the internet. <laughs> oh, it gets worse, though. Unfortunately for the thief, a Polk County Sheriff's Office detective happened to be parked outside and saw the whole thing happen. And saw six DVDs fall out of the leg of his pants while he tried to walk. That's the kind of thing where you just see it happen. You just sit there and watch. Yeah. Let, just it, let like, it happen. Wonder how okay. far it's going to go. Just, just see the guy there trying to be all sneaky and, and clandestine, stuffing his pants full of motor oil. And all the while, the cop's just out there like... Like, I used to have a shitty car that I had to put a gallon of oil in every two weeks. And that shit does get expensive. Like, this thing just burned oil. Apparently, Treasure Hut is a ch national treasure knockoff. So it is the asylum, oh. actually. Oh. Wow. So, so why... You stole 30 shitty DVDs of the same shitty movie? Yes! Why? Netflix! <laughs> Netflix! <laughs> You couldn't give those away. That's why they're being sold at the gas station. Yeah, like at least the motor oil's useful. Uh, maybe the motor oil was to burn them. <laughs> it was a ritual sacrifice. Why? To repower Nicolas Cage. <laughs> why do people keep... To why? No, the asylum can't get Nicolas Cage. It's got to be like an 80s pop star. Like Eric Roberts or... Yeah. Rick Springfield. Oh, Rick Springfield. That's good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Rick Springfield was on True Detective. Why? Why do they keep? Why the pants? Every the shirt would be silly. At least it wasn't a food stuff this time. Like, at least it wasn't a fucking Egg McMuffin, because we've had that. What if the oil leaked? What were or you going to do? lobster. If the oil leaks, all of a sudden you have black shit pouring out of your ass. Just say you ate one of the no, hot dogs. Oil. <laughs> <laughs> you had a little nip from the grill. And you regret it. It's not black until it's burned. It's like a golden color. No, this is the aftermath. <laughs> oh, and there's another one that keeps fucking hat. What? We're back to it. This is from Texas. Did I'm I want to see if I'm the only one who who had this. Maybe I I know we went to elementary school a long time ago. Maybe you guys at home have a different experience with this. But when I was in I'm still in elementary school, when I was in elementary school, oh god, why are you letting? Why why are you? Where are your parents? But when we were in elementary school, I remember distinctly we had at least once a year. They went through and they told us very specifically what 911 was for. Yes. When to use it and when not to use it. Yes. You had that too? Yep. My nephew at one point wanted to call 911 and have me arrested for being a mean aunt because I wouldn't let him do something. And I had to explain to him that that wasn't really an emergency. They, they used to teach us this shit. He was like five. Well, he hadn't gone to school. They used, they used to teach us this shit. They used to, to drill into us, don't fuck with 911. It's not a toy. Not yeah. a joke. <sighs> From Texas. Texas woman calls 911 over slow chicken nuggets. Why is it always fucking chicken nuggets? What? The last one was chicken nuggets. Police in Waco, Texas, were surprised and seemingly amused to receive a useless time-wasting call over the weekend from a resident who dialed 911 because a quick-service restaurant had taken too long to make an order of chicken nuggets. Friday night, woman called 911 to tell emergency services to send the police because her order of chicken nuggets had taken too long from the drive-thru. She reportedly wanted them for free because of the delay, but the restaurant would not give them to her, so she called the police and reported the situation. Yeah, that's not their fucking job. No! Like, I like chicken nuggets too, and I'm really fucking unpleasant when I'm hungry. I get hangry, and it's not pretty. 
And yet still, I have never called the fucking popo. Just eat the napkins. It's about the same nutritional value. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you those right away. <laughs> like, they have better things to do. Yes, and you know what happens if you call 911 and it's not an emergency? You get a ticket. You get a ticket. You got to pay for it. You know what? It's way more expensive than the chicken nuggets. Yeah. You you do not get... It's not... Uh, they are not the food police. No. If they, they don't fucking McDonald's care about your chicken nuggets. <laughs> if there were food police, McDonald's... <laughs> Now I'm just seeing like 10 guys in the white coats with the chef's hats with blue and red lights on the top. With little forks and knives and a, and a, per, and a badge. Perp walking, perp walking yeah. Ronald McDonald. Oh, that's what happened to, that's what happened to the Big Mac cop. <laughs> the mystery is solved. Is, the, why would, why 911 is not, uh, oh boy. They do not have time for your bullshit. Well, this guy didn't call 911. The uh, person who owned the restaurant did. Okay. Have, have you been, I've been to restaurants where the service has sucked or the food has sucked. Sure. Or there have been any kind of problems. And I've handled it in a couple of ways. Sometimes just like, ah, eh, fuck it, and laugh. Sometimes I've talked to someone and be like, dude, this is inedible. What have you done to me? I have never done this, and I'm quite proud of that fact. Man upset about onions in food threatens eatery owner. Oh. And that's, that's a very generous way of describing the story. Was it that asshole judge from Chopped? Because <laughs> there's one asshole on Chopped that just has a fucking omerta against red onions, and if you put them in whatever he's eating, he throws a fucking fit. Pretty. A Michigan man, apparently upset because his food included onions, is jailed on charges he made a drunken threat to shoot the owner of a Pittsburgh restaurant before exposing himself. Now that's tricky wording. Did he threaten to shoot him? Did he like threaten him that like, I will shoot you and then I will whip my dick out at you as you die? Or did he threaten to shoot him and then whip his dick out? 43-year-old Yupa Sharma of Rochester remained in the Allegheny County Jail on charges of terroristic threats, indecent exposure, public drunkenness, and resisting arrest. Police say Sharma ate at All Indiana Restaurant on Monday, then returned Tuesday to rant and complain about the onions. All right, pause here. Next day? He had time to think about this. He had time. He ate the food, went home, the next day, got drunk and so mad about the onions he ate. The day before, he came back. Owner tells police Sharma threatened to shoot him, so he called police. That's when Sharma, confronted by the restaurant owner and another employee, pulled down his pants and exposed himself. <laughs> What's that going to solve? <laughs> Maybe it's, have, you know, like, see, Does see, your onion allergy involve a dick rash and you wanted to show them? <laughs> He's gonna ruin the rate. He's gonna ruin the food service rating. <laughs> the safety. Do you know how like sea cucumbers have touched that? Every, touched everything. <laughs> have that just going around touching everything in the restaurant yeah. with his dick. Yeah. Did, is how sea cucumbers have a self defense mechanism that when you scare them, they spew out their own internal organs. You didn't know that? No, that seems like a poor <clears throat> self-defense mechanism because then you're dead. Well, no, actually, sea cucumbers can grow, grow them back. They're weird. Oh. It seems like this is like for, for drunken dudes, like instead of spewing out their organs, they, they when they're threatened, they whip their dick out. They whip, they pull out their, they pull out their dick. It's the like- onions are delicious. Like, it, let me tell y'all an ancient Irish secret. If you have leftovers of almost any kind, and you don't know what to do with them, here's what you do with them. You dice them, and you fry them in butter with onions. That was Saturday afternoon lunch for my entire childhood, because we always had some leftover potatoes in the fridge, because we went through 15 pounds of potatoes a week. Some ass kind of meat, maybe lunch meat, maybe whatever. My dad would dice it up, throw it in a frying pan with a shit ton of butter and some diced onions. 
I I don't like onions, but I I don't. I've never been a fan of onions. Onions are great. Onions are one of those foods that are built, designed to say, don't put this in your mouth. They have chemicals. It's one of those ways to keep every, and every other mammal avoids eating onions because of this, <laughs> except us. I'm sure the words you were you just saying- Onion rings, English, which are like vegetable donuts? No what? I'm sure the words you onion rings? That are basically little vegetable donuts? No. I'm not yes. a big fan of onions. I'm still mulling over the idea of food you're not supposed to eat. You're not supposed Onions? Peppers? Anything with capsaicin in it? These are things that have developed a defense that says, oh God, get this out of your mouth. And we're the only animal that goes, ah, fuck you, I'll do it anyway. I do what I want. Maybe that's the correlation between whipping the onions and whipping his dick out. Maybe he was like, that shouldn't have gone in my mouth, so now you have to put this in your mouth. You take the layers off of onions, so I'm going to take the layers off of me! Ah! Yes! Let's see, what I, what I, what I, what I, I don't like, but if you put onions in my food, I will politely ask you to uh, make it again without the onions, or I'll take the onions out myself. I will not pull out my dick! Like, onion, like... I kind of think mashed potatoes that don't have diced onions with them are slightly inferior because that's the way my dad made them. I'm wondering if onions took, are great. If it took him a day to remember the onions in his food, do you think he was checking the aftermath? Is that how he is that how he learned? That's when that's when the gas hit. Oh. Nobody's a winner. Everybody loses that day. Uh, all right, we've we've got two with video for this next one. <clears throat> this next guy, elaborate scheme to pull off his crime, which I kind of respect because you know there's some planning involved. There's an idea, but it's like they they have this the, the ambition, but not the capacity. This is from Maryland. It's quite special. Let me pull up the video for everybody. Because, uh, where is it? Where is it? I got it. I know I got it. Ah. We had somebody successfully do this before, though. Here we go. Um... Prince George County police say uh, on June 1st, someone stole a backhoe, drove it five miles to a bank where the operator tried to claw his way to the money. Used the bucket to peel away the ATM's outer wrapping. It was unsuccessful. He's doing a back wheel. He took it out. <laughs> um... He was not able to get any money out of the ATM, but he caused $10,000 worth of damage. Just watching there, just crap, fucking up that ATM. Happy as you please. I'm pretty confident we had somebody who did this successfully a couple of years ago. Who got like a backhoe or an excavator and drove the fuck off with an ATM machine but they couldn't get it open. And this guy could not get it open. See, he's just literally just smacking the ATM around. Smash points. How did they do it on Breaking Bad? Um, They dragged it out and they uh, tried to use a crowbar. And, uh, did they get it open on Breaking Bad? He did get it open in the end after he killed both of the people. Yeah. Spoiler. Spoilers. Okay, Arrow Zeppelin. Dem hoes really want to get their dollar bills. I mean, okay. You know, points to the guy for actually. There, there was a method to the madness, but there was, there was. Too, there was too much madness in the method. It's just you know, like Not enough planning in the method, maybe or was, knowledge. He got the out heavy machinery. 
deal with the ATM, but then he just didn't understand the capacity. It's like a monkey with with a with like a coconut and a rock, just bang, 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 and that's the all. The difference is the monkey will get in eventually. <laughs> eventually, that will work for the monkey. This is a very big rock. He's just sort of smacking it around. Yeah. In the end, he did not get the ten. They're they're looking, and now they're looking for your ass. I'm willing to bet the amount of money in that ATM it was less than the cost of those repairs. And the jail. And the jail. Because it's not just jail for, for the damages. It's also attempted bank robbery, which they're not very nice about. <laughs> and I mean, unless you own a backhoe, yeah. that's probably stolen. Yeah. Did he rent the vehicle? Or he stole that. Uh, I think we have to, even though it's not the right type of vehicle. He tried to steal it with a backhoe. Yeah. Of course. Oh, that. Yeah. Have to. Fucking MST. <sighs> All right, this last one. This is a special video, kids. This, this, this one is is wow. Um, this is from Florida, and we'll file this one under shit that cops did not sign up for. Um. Oh man. Let's get the video queued up so everyone can see this. This comes from, uh, let's see, Marion County, Florida. Yeah, I know. Driving, cop is driving down the street and encounters this gentleman. Just walking along, happy as you please, fucking naked. With a farmer's tan. Maybe he was just trying to even out that farmer's tan. So the cop here, as you can see, tries to follow along behind him. Sir. Sir, excuse me, sir. Sir. You're, you're not wearing any trousers, sir. You're not fuzzy enough to get away with it. If you like me, you can get away with it. Free and easy. But, uh, no. And the guy just is ignoring the fact that there's a cop. Until at last he just walks over. Come What's over the here. problem, yeah. officer? Come, come over here. What? Right here in front of my car. Yeah. Can a guy what? walk around What's, naked and be left deal, alone man? in this world? Why, why are you naked? Why are you naked? Were you in that accident up the road there? No. Hey, hey. <laughs> Why would you try to open up my driver's door? Are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> the cop actually says, are you kidding me, right. dude? <laughs> Go ahead and face me so I can talk to you, my man. Let me explain to you why you're in cuffs. Yeah. All right, you tried to open up the driver's door of a police car. Yeah. That's not He's normal. Reading? Okay. He's out making in the rain? So something's going on with you to where you're Someone left his dick out in the rain. Normal people <laughs> in their normal mind are not going to go and open up the front driver's door of a police car. Yeah. He's just hey, in there. That, you are park. absolutely naked, my man. Another thing, not normal. So let me ask you something. Have you had any sort of illegal narcotics, any sort of prescription medication that you're under the influence of? You haven't taken anything? Because you're sweating like crazy. Bullshit, he has it. Okay, yeah. well, I got Megs coming to check you out. Are you going to give him a hard time? Because you're walking around naked. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you realize that. Back to you. I'm also going to need a supervisor to respond. Reference uh, damage to my vehicle. Press release issued by the Marion County Sheriff's Office states the 18 year old Andrew Humphreys left a car accident scene on foot. As he left the scene, witnesses says he walked up to a parked car, pulled the door handle off. When he couldn't get into the car, Humphreys urinated on it. That like car... You hmm? Like you do? That car belonged to a Marion County Sheriff's Office deputy. <laughs> 
Humphreys then began to walk down the highway completely naked. Police officer found him, exited his car, and spoke with the teen. Humphreys then walked to the front of the patrol vehicle and tried to open the driver's door. Naked man was handcuffed and placed in the back of the car. Quote, let me explain to you why you're in cuffs. You tried to open up the driver's door of a police car. That's not normal. That's not normal. Humphreys. That's the part that's not normal. The fact that you ripped off a door handle with your naked berserker strength. <laughs> I see that every fucking Tuesday. And there on the handle of the car was a. Uh, <laughs> Humphreys was charged with one count of felony criminal. Oh, yeah. Humphreys then began kicking the rear passenger door of the car and pulling on the metal cage. They say the entire door will need to be replaced. Humphreys then placed under arrest and transported to jail. Okay. You know. I like Old strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for us. <laughs> naked berserker strength. Yeah, that's that's our lot. That's our title this week. Naked berserker strength. Now, what? Because I I understand drugs can be fun. I like a beer now and again. That's cool. I don't think a beer counts as drugs. It's it. I I have my drug. I have my beer. I have my nicotine. Those are drugs. Like I get that by like the Mormon definition. That's it's a drug. But I don't think a beer is drugs <laughs> but okay but, but uh, why i don't do not understand the appeal of a drug that will make you completely lose touch with every goddamn thing i don't get it you you, you don't watch the news much these days do you <laughs> fair point know. Fair well, point. You're halfway to disassociating just reading it anyway, so yeah. Like, I'd be cool with smoking something and thinking I'm in my little pony friendship is fucking magic. Like that <laughs> that might improve my day. But just you know if a drug that will make you walk down the street naked and get into a fight with a cop naked. <sighs> yeah, probably not. That, that that doesn't sound like a fun Sunday for me. It doesn't you know? sound like the fun drugs, no. That doesn't sound like a good time. Only no. once. Maybe fun once. Because as bad as getting tased is, I bet getting tased in the balls is way worse. I mean, it's, 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 and again, this is one of those instances where if you're a police officer, you're like, don't make me tackle you. Don't make me tackle you. Please don't <laughs> yeah. make me tackle you. This is not what I signed up for. I don't get paid enough for this, this shit. This is not what I fucking signed up for. You think by now that probably is part of the training? Probably. You know about day three. Now, boys, you're probably <laughs> going to have to tackle some naked guy, and I warn you, he's going to be squishy. <laughs> he's going to be a little slippery. <laughs> and maybe a little excited. They, they just always are. Yeah. And that's what I always wonder, like... We're getting like, the new waterproof uniforms. I have never had a penis. But I'm told they're unpredictable and sensitive. Yes. So I feel like if you went out into the world and literally exposed your penis to all these new sensations that it never felt before, like breeze... <sighs> I mean, I don't know, but I feel like that might be, let's just say, exciting. Well, there is a I mean, there is a point when you're a male, some between about the ages of thirteen and twenty seven, where just erections are just like, hello, random, just for no goddamn good reason. You could be watching a commercial for uh, fucking, I don't know. Aloe vera? No. What's what's what? Like the Snuggles Bear. You can watch a commercial for the fucking Snuggles Bear, and all of a sudden you have a, a very confused erection, yeah. and be I like, for affinity. <laughs> Snuggles Bear does have a sexy voice though. <laughs> Just for there is a point in your life as a male 
your dick is completely out of your control. It, it will go, it will, you'll have it. I think you're being generous saying that's over at 27 personally. Well, the, the erections kind of slow down. They, they only let me look who's in the White House. Uh, I'm laughing because we switch cable providers, but at, at the old place, we used to go through the channel. And you know, you have those channels that are just selling weird shit, uh -huh. like 24 hours a day. Like, it's not even QVC. It's just bad infomercials all yes. day. Yes. And there used to be one called Hello Erections with an exclamation point. Because Dan and I are just dorks. Every time we'd scroll past it, we'd both yell, Hello, Erection! <laughs> it was usually preceded by puppy pooping in the house. <laughs> question That's at least three categories on X2. <laughs> you know, the, the program line would read, Puppy pooping in the house? <laughs> Hello, Erection! <laughs> to get your dog involved in that. <laughs> I don't think that's okay. You should not have a dog. <laughs> and luckily I married someone who thinks that's as hilarious as I do. Because we both do it. We just scroll by and go, hello, and keep scrolling. <laughs> like that's a normal thing to do. It's just, it, it, this does not seem like a fun outcome for drugs. This does not seem like, you know, but he did have the naked berserker strength. <laughs> Maybe well, he had just gotten down from a Hulk out. Maybe it wasn't drugs. Maybe Hulk he had just pants. Hulked down and he ripped all his clothes, hulking out. Or right, right. still had some of the strength left. Oh, so the pants expanded when he hulked out, but then when he got normal size, they just fell. Right. Okay. All right. All right. I'm done with this. Uh, yeah. All right. I, I, I will. I'll grant you the, the, the naked berserkers. You know what? On the day we have some sort of Red Dawn, Shaira Law sort of scenario. The naked berserker strength? You'll yeah. Fight, you'll, fight the, you'll fight the Russians naked? Yeah, sure. Maybe. Red Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> but in any other circumstance, this doesn't seem like a fun family outing. Well... He was by himself. Unless you're the guy who made that key mansion. I mean, god damn. I, this is the first... God, if if the, the first thing we learned this week... If the drugs make you naked and crazy, they are not good drugs. No. Those are the bad drugs. Do the good drugs. There are lots of them. That won't make you run around... Yes. Rage. What I qualify as a good drug is, am I sitting watching some obscure 70s cartoon and laughing like an imbecile over it and I don't even know why? That's a good drug. That's a good drug. I don't think I share that definition. Does it make Adult Swim funny? Well, there's no... That is not a good drug. The, the, <laughs> There's no drug that can do that. We're not talking science fiction here. Uh, um, we learned this week that planning is half the battle. Mm -hmm. It's the follow through. You, you got it because, you know. The idea is important, <clears throat> but, but the execution yeah. you also gotta, has to be there. You got to do the gesture I just made accidentally. Sorry. <laughs> a little bit of research online. A little bit. Google is your friend. You got to You got to do. You got to do the work. Um, we've learned no matter how you feel about the food, there's no need to involve your dick. No. And that goes either way, whether you like the meal or not. Your dick does not need to be involved in your reaction. Unless you're making films for BigSausagePizza.com, but I don't think that website exists anymore. Which is a shame because that was fantastically bad niche porn. I know I've mentioned real. this site on there before. Yes, but every video is the same. They had like a fake delivery guy holding a pizza a little too low, and then the girl in her little nightie would let him in, and for some reason she'd let the pizza guy sit down, which fuck you, I've got a pizza, get the fuck out of my house now. <sighs> and inevitably they'd open the pizza box and there'd be a hole in the center of the pizza with his dick poking through, and she'd fucking fuck him. 
threw a pizza. And it was sauce down there. <laughs> Hot cheese? No. Mm. Also, that's a waste of a perfectly good pizza. But they were like, they were like 20 videos all made on this one same premise. And I'm like, I someone's agree. making money on this. I agree. Why didn't I think of that? We haven't had a celebratory nude uh, food thing, have we? No. This quiche was amazing! <laughs> We've learned 911 has very specific uses. Chicken nuggets, not one of them. Unless you're choking on a chicken nugget and don't know the Heimlich maneuver, then you can call 911. Or you find a toe in one. Yeah. Find a toe, definitely call. <laughs> call somebody. Don't eat it. I break them. Okay. We, we've learned. You have eaten at McDonald's in the last. 30 years or so, haven't you? We've learned. Stop. I could get you a toe. I could get you a toe tomorrow. <laughs> stop putting stuff down your pants. Please. Stop it. You're, you're not even original anymore. You're not no, the. You're not it's the. It's been done. It's been done to death. And you're not bringing it back. You're not. Yeah. It hasn't. Come, it's not like disco. It hasn't come around again. You're not bringing it back. Your can is metaphorical. It's it's over. Finally, this week we've learned there are bears in Dracula's castle. And it's awesome. And they're going to evict them. There's gonna, more bears. They're, they're godless killing machines. I think that's where the cross is. <laughs> That's going to be a great movie. Like, think about that movie. Like, oh, we found these bears and th there's like the nature photographer chronicling their relocation and it turns out they're vampire bears. And it's like a found footage horror movie. As you're describing this, the film just premiered on sci-fi. Temple Ben. I demand royalties. 